the second week of the United States Football League, the USFL. The New Jersey Generals and the Philadelphia Stars. The vet in Philadelphia, New Jersey, and the Philadelphia Stars of ABC. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. And once again, we have been blessed by good weather. The cold and wet days of the lingering winter in the east moved on out and brought us bright sunshine temperatures in the mid-50s for today's ball game between the Stars of Philadelphia and the Generals of New Jersey. One of the prime worries of the USFL going into this season was parity. Would there be parity amongst the 12 teams, the original teams? Well, it seems some of that worry may not be quite as pronounced as thought, because two of the teams considered to be bullies in the USFL were beaten last night. The tough Chicago Blitz, coached by George Allen, got into quite a scuffle out in Arizona, and the Wranglers came on in the last six minutes of the ball game to score 18 points and pull it out 30-29 to 29 on a 33-yard field goal with just one second remaining to play, a crowd of more than 28,000. The other game played last night, the Tampa Bay Bandits defeated the Michigan Panthers roundly 19-7. John Reeves had his second big game in a row, and the attendance there just under 39,000. So a couple of surprises last night in the USFL. As for some comment on last night, last week, and today's ball game between New Jersey and Philadelphia, let's turn to my colleague, Lynn Swan, the former great all-pro wide receiver from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Morning. Thank you, Keith. Last night's game and last week's game, I thought, were very competitive, the outcomes not being decided until the final minutes and seconds of those games. But last week, conservative play marked that game, and the New Jersey team will have to be a great deal more aggressive if they hope to have a chance in this ball game, because the strongest part about the Philadelphia team is their offensive line. And when they're working well, Kelvin Bryant will run and catch the ball extremely well. Conversely, the uh, Philadelphia defense will also have to play well. We know that the uh, New Jersey team can run the ball, but they're going to have to pass the ball against a very sound Philadelphia secondary. That means Herschel Walker has to be more involved in that passing game because it's not enough just to be able to run. Keith? Some of the leading offensive personalities in today's ball game obviously are going to revolve around two of the prized rookies in the USFL, one of them being Kelvin Bryant, signed by Philadelphia. Kelvin out of North Carolina. He carried the ball 18 times for only 51 yards. He's got to produce a little more than that on the ground for them, even though he is a threat with the pass. As for Herschel Walker's debut against Los Angeles last week, he gained 65 yards on 16 carries and scored a touchdown. But what about Herschel Walker going into game number two? He says this. I think I'm at least more mental prepared today. Like, I think I was more physical last week. I think it's most mental and uh, knowing the assignment a lot better than I knew last week. All right, the quarterbacks in the ball game now. We noted uh, going into today's program that Bobby Scott had a big week percentage-wise. He also threw the ball well and completed a lot of passes for a lot of yards. But he didn't win the ball game. Los Angeles beat it, 20 to 15. Uh, when you complete 63% of your passes, completing 24 out of 38, you figure you're going to win. But it didn't work out that way. On the other hand, Chuck Fusina, who completed 55% of his passes, completing 16 of 29, ran one in for the touchdown, and that with two field goals made it stand up. But right now, Chuck Fusina, the quarterback out of Penn State for the Philadelphia Stars, is with our colleague Tim Brent. Chuck, New Jersey was rather conservative last week, and they did uh, have some problems defensively in their linebackers. What can we expect to see offensively out of you guys today to attack that? Well, we're going to mix it up today, hopefully establish the run, and then work in the pass a little bit. It's a windy day. Um, I think Kelvin should have a good day for us, and hopefully if he has a good day, then the passing game should go fine. Can we look for the underneath routes with Kelvin and also the timing patterns with Fisky? Yeah, I think so. We try to use a ball, ball possession control type offense, and in that case, Kelvin and Fisky should get the ball a lot. Okay, so good luck today. Thanks a lot. Back up to you, Keith. All right, Tim. Crowd still coming in. A very warm, comfortable afternoon. Temperature mid-50s. We've talked enough. Let's put it on the field and play some football. White is the referee. Umpire is Ed Manning, both out of the ECAC, Eastern Collegiate Athletic Conference. So is Jeff Berkman, the head linesman. 
Uh, the line judge, Larry Hill, out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Back judge, Mike Looney, out of the Southern Independence. And the field judge is Mike Cochran from the ECAC. Philadelphia has won the toss. They will receive the football. The wind is quite brisk around the rim of the stadium. The vet is a bowl. The wind comes down into it and swirls around, and it can be particularly difficult. But as we noted, it is a most comfortable day, considering what we've had here over the last few days in Philadelphia. The kicking off will be Dave Jacobs. He is the young man who had two field goals for New Jersey last week. He will tee it up from right to left, and he will kick it to number 22, Alan Harbin. Alan Harbin is a 200-pounder out of Cincinnati. He is a rookie. Dave Jacobs showed pretty good kickoff, hang time and distance last week once he got past the opening game jitters. I think a lot of people had some opening game jitters last week, but many of you know the attendance was better than 40,000 for the opening round of USFL games. The attendance was pretty good last night, and the contest is on as Jacobs nailed it deep into the end zone. at their own 20. They play on the artificial surface here at the vet in Philly. Chuck Bucino will start at quarterback with Kelvin Bryant and Booker Russell at the setback position. Wide receivers are Willie Collier, Scott Fitzke, and Steve Folsom is the tight end. But I think you also have to include uh, the running back Bryant in amongst the receivers. The big guys up front reflected there, and Bart and Brad Oates are brothers. Now we get some movement. Philadelphia shifts in the first half of the ball game from the 20. And the handoff goes to the big guy. They go to the fullback this time. Booker Russell, 235 pounds out of southwest Texas, brought down by Ray Kostick out of Mississippi State. The gain is up across the 25 to the 26. Defensively for New Jersey, it's James Lockett, Ben Watts, Richard Murray, the down lineman in the 3-4 defense. The linebackers are Schultz, Mathis, Kostick, and Weddington, the secondary for the generals. Daniel, Noel, Moody, and Williams. Second down and four for Philadelphia. And they come up this time loaded on both sides. They are double wide. The tight end flexes off into the slot and goes in motion. And Cubina back on second down and four to throw. Goes short over the middle. The pass is caught by Steve Folsom. Folsom breaks his leg across the 40. Goes to the 44. First down, Philadelphia. Very, very well executed here, Keith. Sending the receivers downfield, spreading out that defense. And the tight end just comes across, just into that open zone. There you see he's getting a little pick from the fullback downfield. First down for the star. Steve Holcomb out of Utah. Big guy, 6'4", 230. Last week, two back to the pass for 10 yards. Back a little. Kelvin Bryant now, the eye back out of the eye formation. And they've got trips on the top of the picture. Back goes Fusina to throw it again. Goes short over the middle to Kelvin Bryant. Bryant, one of the more elusive people in the game of football. Takes it down inside the New Jersey 45, close to the 43. Bryant caught six passes last week for 34 yards. And the second tackle of the ball game by Keith Moody. Keith, those are the plays that are so difficult to stop. You send that back out of the, out of the backfield. You get him into the secondary, not deep. And all he does is just sit down. Now, when you get a runner who is an elusive type runner, he gets downfield. He doesn't have that many people to go through. And you see here, the excellent move he puts on the linebacker and gains another six yards on the play. So the Stars opening with successive first down, moving the ball through the air primarily. From the call it inside the 44. Oh, Pitch to Kelvin Brown. Gets around the corner to the 40. Out of bounds at about the 37 by Mike Williams. Mike Williams played very well for New Jersey last week at the right cornerback position. He's out of Texas A&M. Lanky Kelvin Bryant, who at one time in his junior year exploded for 15 touchdowns in three ball games. Penn Staters are very obvious on the Philadelphia ball club. Chuck Yusina, of course, was the quarterback of, uh, I thought, a great Penn State team that went to the Sugar Bowl and lost to Alabama. That's 78 team. One with Truman and Suey and Farrell and all those people. The handoff again to Bryant. Explodes up the middle and goes inside the 30 to the 29. Well, I said the best part of the, of the Philadelphia team might be that offensive line, and so far they're doing a phenomenal job. Opening up a big hole there up the middle, a quick hitting play for Kelvin. 
Brad Oates at one tackle, 275. The other tackle is Irv Eastman, the rookie out of UCLA, 280. The guard, Chuck Comiskey, 280 from Ole Miss, and Rich Garza out of Temple, 260. And the center is the rookie from BYU, Bart Oates, at 267. They are very big and quick. Left tackle and center, the Oates brothers are brothers, and uh, they have a, a lot of great expectations of people. Jim Moore, who came in late to the Philadelphia organization, they had one coach, George Perlis, who moved on to Michigan State, and he came to the team, and he's very happy he's here. The ball is just inside the New Jersey 30-yard line, where it is first down. Philadelphia, no score. We've got a timeout. Chuck Fairbanks patrolling the sidelines for the New Jersey Generals, the head coach. He is also president of the organization. And he thought he had won one last week, only to have it slip away in the final moment. Now he's watching his defense get tested. They go into a five-man defensive front as the linebackers come up on the outside. On first down, Fusina almost dropped the ball coming off the snap, but gets it away as the pass is incomplete, bobbled around by Booker Russell, the fullback, swinging out to the right side. Pass was not precisely on target for Booker, and he couldn't get a handle on it. The toughest thing about that pass, Keith, was the angle which it was thrown. He did. He did. Christina really didn't get a lot of pressure, but just the angle he had to throw the ball to Russell made it a very, very difficult catch as Russell couldn't get his body turned to grab it. It is second down and ten. The ball is just inside the thirty. The Philadelphia Stars in the red and gold. Now they move Bryant up into a slot position, which automatically makes him an obvious passing target. Instead, he reverses it the other way, has the football. He's pinned in and caught from behind and brought down on a fine play by Richard Murray, who had five years in the NFL. Murray at 260, 29 years of age, out of Oklahoma. And a big play for Richard. The loss is back outside the 35. In fact, back outside the 37. So they're going to be looking at third down at about 18. Can't dance rounds for too long in that backfield. There's always a big man trying That's to right. take you down. The wide receivers now are two of Joe Paterno's former players. Scott Fitzke, number 81. Tom Donovan, number 87. Willie Collier is the other wide man. So three wides are in there. And back goes Fusina, getting good protection. Gets his pass off. The pass is complete to the tight end, Steve Folsom. He is inside the 25, but he is short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth down, and here comes the kicking team. The field goal was very much uh, a weapon last week in the opening round of games. It was obviously very much a weapon last night in Arizona's victory over Chicago at 30 to 29, and Dave Trout is on now. Dave Trout, who stands only 5'6", but has tremendous velocity with that foot, Going from 41 yards, it is into that swirling wind and nothing to it. It just knocked it right down. The wind turned out to be the 12th player on that defensive team. The ball just hung up in the air. And so, the Philadelphia Stars are turned away. No score in the first quarter. Move along, Irv Eatman, who signed on as a rookie. Right now, let's concern ourselves with New Jersey. They have the football. And the quarterback is Bobby Scott, Herschel Walker, Dwight Sullivan in the backfield. Wide men are Larry Brodsky, Tom McConaughey, Victor Hicks is the tight end. Victor Hicks had a big week last week. Millard, McMillan, Hall, Harris, Murtha up front. And Bobby Scott with a slight drawn pull starts at quarterback from the 24. It goes to Herschel. And Walker running to his left. Gets it from the 24 out to about the 28, maybe the 29. Mike Lush. 92 pounder from East Stroudsburg State brought him down. The free safety. The defensive unit for Philadelphia fielder Ofer and Case, the three down men. Backers are Brooks, Howard, Mills, and Cooper. Secondary Gibson, Warner, Lush, and Jackson. And it is second down and five. And Scott gives it. This time it was fullback Sullivan and Sullivan takes a wallop from Sam Mills, inside linebacker out of Montclair State. Oh, and the coaches are high on him. Here's a young man who everyone said should make the team. He's barely 5'10". He's not a 
real big man for a linebacker. He doesn't have great strength, but he wants to play football. He's a great game against Denver, and Jim Moore likes the way this man plays football. Ball is just over the 30, where it is third down and four. by Mike Friday. Mike Friday, number 88, made a great grab. He was pretty well covered. He was very well covered. He had to completely extend himself to make this catch. We see Bobby Scott just going back, reading that secondary, and watch the way he goes after this football. All in his hands, great concentration. He hangs on to it. Mike good size, 6'3", 205, out of Indiana. goes to Herschel. crashing it all around him, and it just looks like he didn't have a good handle on the ball. Glenn Howard laid a hit on him. Glenn really stuck his helmet on the ball, and he came out of there. And here's Philadelphia now with an opportunity. First down at their own 46. Same alignment. Scott Fitzgerald comes to the bottom of the picture. And the tight end jumps ahead of the snap. The tight end, Steve Folsom, firing off the line of scrimmage. One count ahead of the snap. So that'll cost him five yards. Tom White, out of the ECAC, the referee. You've got eight minutes and nine seconds to play in the football game. The New Jersey General sideline. Offside, right in, first down. And it's first down and 15 from the 41. You see it, look, look, throws to the short man, Brian, and Brian didn't look the ball into his hands and just slid right on through it. Brian took the ball probably about turning and running downfield than about making that catch. That's only the second game these people have played. Remember, there were no exhibition games for them to sort out the personnel. They had a mass of players, and from that group they picked 50 and uh, worked for just about 10 days with them. Opened the season last week. They've had an additional week of work. And the offense probably a little more pronounced going into the second round. Once again, a Philadelphia running back does not control the football before he starts to run. And that time it's Booker Russell. I know if you've seen this not throwing the ball that hard, it's a nice low pass. He's throwing it with a, with a good deal of touch. They look easy enough to catch. Let's take another look at it here as he drops back. Again, the defense of New Jersey is dropping back awfully deep. They did it all last week. Here he just can't hang on to it. And that linebacker is a good, was a good seven yards away from him when he had a chance to catch the ball. A lot of daylight. And when you've got a fellow like Bryant, if you can get him in that open zone area and get him one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to hurt you. They're down at 15. the middle, brought down by Dana Noel. All last week, New Jersey came, team played a very simplistic zone defense, and here they're doing it again. They're only rushing three people, which gave Cicina enough time to throw the ball. Here we see Donovan. He comes in, no great move. He's just getting behind the linebackers, putting his hands in the air, and getting into that open team of the zone. And they're one of the safeties, one of the three deep safeties coming up to make a tackle. And it's the first down for Philadelphia. At the New Jersey, 42. Kelvin Bryant. And he gets 
a couple. Right now, let's check in with our colleague, Cam Brandt. Steve, it was Glenn Howard who had a pretty good lick on Herschel Walker. Tell me about the fumble play. Well, uh, it was a draw play to my side. Uh, the tight end blocked down on me. I just tried to get off of him. And uh, I was free on, on contact. I hit Herschel a pretty good lick, but he broke my tackle, I think, and a uh, couple guys about a yard downfield gang tackled him. And uh, I turned around and seen the ball pop down. Fortunately, we could get on it. Okay, Glenn Howard, back up to you, Keith. Back to Tammy, second down and eight. Or rather, Kelvin Black, who had lined up in a fullback position. Richard Murray again meets him and brings him down. Kelvin Bryant is 6'2", 195. He is a rangy sort of a fella. He really doesn't look like he is that heavy. But he can stick his head in the sack pretty well. Jim Mora, whose qualifications for a head coaching job, is quite pronounced. The young man has done quite a job since he came here. It's third down and five. over the middle and uh, misses his man. He had his tight end Folsom down the middle. He had Folsom open early because he had turned in front of Dana Noel but just didn't get the ball to him in time. And that time he was looking at a blitz by the New Jersey team and he tried to get rid of the ball as quickly as he could but it's a little mixed up. The punter for Philadelphia is a young man named Sean Landetta out of Towson State in Maryland in the Baltimore area drafted in the 14th round. He averaged 44-7 in college. Last week, he averaged 44-8 on six kicks. He shoots it for the sideline. He gets it up into the wind, and the wind blew it out on him. Uh, see where they mark him. They're going to mark him up at the 18. So he didn't get out of it what he wanted, only 13 yards. And time is out with 4.58 to play in the first quarter. First down for New Jersey Generals is Herschel Walker. Goes in motion and the handoff goes to the fullback White Sullivan out of North Carolina State up across the 20 to the 21 and Sam Mills he is there to greet him one more time. Second tackle in the ball game for Mills. He popped through that line. Mills is just standing there waiting for him. Boy, got low, made a good tackle. Of course, he doesn't bend down too far to get low. He picked up, let's call it three yards, make it second down and seven, just outside the 21. Reedy is the man wide, and again, same lineup as Walker goes in motion, and uh, Sullivan again carries up across the 25. New Jersey trying to get a little uh, movement offensively in this ball game from their ground troops. You see Sullivan, the big fullback, carrying the ball. But up front, it's Brian Millard, 282, Troy McMillan, 260, Kent Hall, 256, Wayne Harris, 269, Greg Murtha, 261, and Victor Hicks, who was very active in the pass patterns of last week at 6'3", 256. Victor has not seen the ball as yet. And this, of course, is being the second game of the season. I had a chance to look at some films and count each other for the first time. Third down and two, and Walker has it. And the sweet right may not have produced the first down. Maybe close. And it looks like they're going to call it first down. So the New Jersey General pick up a first down as the football is marked up near the 30-yard line. And Herschel Walker on what uh, Lynn Swan alma mater used to call the student body right. <laughs> Herschel, of course, the Heisman Trophy winner, three brilliant years at the University of Georgia under Vince Dooley. The young man that set off the storm as he walked away from his senior year of eligibility to turn the Back goes Bobby Scott, whips it upfield, pass is on the money to McConaughey up at the 45. So Bobby Scott, out of the University of Tennessee, who spent 11 years as a reserve quarterback with the New Orleans Saints, throws one on the money to McConaughey, who comes out of Central Arkansas. Sal McConaughey is very much a technician when it comes to running his pass patterns. Not great speed, not a great deal of quickness, but very precise in his route as he just called the shores up in front of his own. He caught four for 61 yards last week. Here's Herschel Walker. 
Going to the right side, trying to pop it out of there. He gets two yards. And there's no question, uh, Lynn, when uh, Walker's got the ball, the defense is looking for him. And we've got a state teaching and coaching going on the sidelines right now. And, uh, Walker goes back into the huddle. That's a, I think that is also the reason why they're sending him in motion early to find out if any one person's going to key on him and they're trying to spread out that defense a bit. Lawson now is in. Mark Lawson. 6'3", 195, wide man to the bottom of the picture. Big target. Scott gives it to Lawson. Up the middle he goes and he is rolled back after a yard. And you see the middle of the line. Mills. Let's take a look at Mills. Again, not a very big man, but he hangs in there real tough, reads his teeth, and there, right in the center of the tackle, gets the first hit on Herschel Walker. Number 54. Ball is just short of midfield. Call it third down and six. Walker now five carries and 18 yards. Coffee is in there. Walker is out. Back goes Scott to throw. Loops it downfield. Intercepted. Intercepted. Uh, somebody broke a pattern. Uh, it looked to me like Scott was throwing the ball to a point. The receiver turned and went the other way. And it, Antonio Gibson had it all to himself. Antonio Gibson did a great job with this gift, really, from Bobby Scott. Because Bobby is throwing to where he thinks the receiver is just going to stop and turn right around to him. The receiver sprints to the outside. And there is Antonio Gibson. That is the fourth interception of Bobby Scott in the USFL. So the second turnover by the New Jersey Generals gives the Philadelphia Stars the football. First down at their own 32. Antonio Gibson making the interception. Chuck Cusina brings the Stars up now offensively. And they put Kelvin Bryant deep in the eye formation. Cusina goes over the middle, the tight end is wide open. Steve Folsom. That time they didn't drop 20 and got burned. <laughs> this is exactly what game film can help you do. They played that two deep secondary quite a bit against the LA Express last week. Peter Cusina looks for it, sends the tight end deep right down the middle, splits the two safeties behind and gets behind those linebackers, puts on a good little move here and picks up a few extra yards. That makes preparation. Get. Yep, sure. You've seen it now, six out of nine for 83 yards. He had two passes dropped when he threw it right on the hand. From the general 49, give the ball to Kelvin Bryant, and the offensive line surge takes him across the 45 to the 44. Here's Tim. Quick flag, I know the moment he hadn't been beat, but you know, I had a good reaction on the ball, broke back up on him, and made a pretty good interception. Okay, thank you, Antonio. Back up to you, Keith. Talking to Antonio Gibson, uh, late getting the mic open so you can hear his name. We've got a end of the first quarter. We have no score in Philadelphia under blue sky and bright sunshine. Philadelphia's ball, second down to six, just inside the 45 of New Jersey. No score. We're at the vet in Philadelphia. USFL action here on ABC. New Jersey turned the ball over twice. In their offensive movement so far in the ball game. Chuck Fusina, the quarterback, calls Scott Pitsky in motion, drops back to throw. He's on. He had a lane, he pulled it down, and he took a lick coming up to hit him, and uh, hit him with some authority was Tom Woodland, number 71, and Mike Weddington, number 52. It was Woodland who was very much involved last week in the fourth and uh, one play in Los Angeles. You see the stats here from the first quarter, and obviously the Philadelphia team in the lead. But what it doesn't show is that the field position, the Philadelphia has had field position throughout the game, and that on uh, Dave Trout's field goal attempt, there was, there was a 12th man on the field to win, which literally held that field goal attempt in midair and stopped it from going through. Both Chuck, teams right now just playing uh, up and down the middle of the field. Chuck Yusina trying for the first down, trying to hook slide, didn't get it as Woodland knocked him back. And he comes up just about a, a foot short of the first down at the 39 of New Jersey. So it'll be third down and very short. Yusina 
signed uh, the NFL, a couple of NFL teams that will look at it, including Tampa Bay, a lot of Penn State. I think he fumbled the ball, didn't he? Looks like he lost the snap there, but he fell on it. And got enough for the first down, looks like. Here we see he takes a snap here, and there it is, just popped yes. right through his hand. But that line is coming in to wedge put on that particular play, a wedge type block, and so the ball was protected by them children, and he was able to fall on top of it. They'll have to measure it. He only needed about a foot, and he's probably pretty close to it. We're just starting the second quarter of play, and we've had mistakes in the ball game, a fumble and a turnover by New Jersey. And he's still short. Not just that much. Chuck Fairbanks now looking to the big people in the middle. Tom Woodland, 260. He alternates with nose guard with Ben Watt. Richard Murray, 260. Lockett, 259. Of course, in this particular instance, the linebackers are going to have to step in there and do some stunning because you figures they're going to send somebody. Maybe even the quarterback will just take it and bang it up the middle. They've got Jeff Rodenberger in there now. He's a big guy, 6'3", 235 pounds out of Maryland. Kelvin Bryant is the deep man out of the eye. And Bryant has the ball, and he has the first down. So they go to a power eye with Rodenberger, 235 in. Give the ball to Bryant, and behind uh, Rodenberger and Russell, they just bang it in for the first down. The offensive line just controls that line of scrimmage, and you see right there, it's driving the defensive line back off the ball. Nothing fancy, straight ahead football. Number 50 is coming off the field for New Jersey. That's Reggie Mathis, the Oklahoma linebacker. He kind of hobbles to the sideline, shaken up for a moment. Maurice Clemens. Back. Pitsky starts in most stop. A little mix up there. The ball is pitched to Kelvin Bryant. And Bryant slides, slips, and wiggles his way around the right side for about nine yards. Dana Noel finally brought him down. This is what we were talking about a while ago when we were one referred to uh, Kelvin Bryant as elusive. Watch it. He gets good blocking up front here and almost gets out in front of his block and he just follows it. Nothing fancy. Here he didn't even have to use a move but just kept his legs moving following the good blocking his offensive line is providing for him. Hard guy to get a solid hit on too. So he has had a history at the college level of quite a few uh, bruises and injuries. One of them serious. Bryant going right side, planting it, gets the first down. The ball is inside the 25 now of New Jersey. And the Philadelphia Stars beginning to get some offensive movement. Bryant with nine carries in the ball game for 28 yards. He carried 18 times in the opener at Denver last week for 51 yards. Going to get a rest right here. Alan Harvin will come in. Harvin at 5'9", 200 out of Cincinnati, a rookie. He's also the kick returner, and he was a fifth-round draft choice out of Cincinnati. Had 17 yards last week on three carries. Fullback remains Booker Russell. First down from the 24. If you see that, stands up, goes to the sidelines with it. Pass is completed. Right on the sideline to suck the field. Quick pass, taking advantage of that cornerback who is rotating up again a two deep zone, a pattern that requires just a little bit of timing and just sitting down in the middle of that zone. Fitzy, a good technician, just makes an outside move and gets open. And it's first down, goal to go. Philadelphia, the football is just inside the New Jersey nine yard line. Under a great deal of pressure. 
And Bitsy comes up with a great pass. Bitsy's been a couple of years down in San Diego, and he has blown a tough to send you all kinds of defensive coverages, so no problem for him getting open. Hey, hooks it, hits the left upright, and the ball ricochets away, and he misses. At 11 minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first half, the Philadelphia Stars take a 6-0 lead over the New Jersey Generals, but they miss the extra point. Former teammate at Penn State, Chuck Fusina, for the touchdown that puts them on the board. Here we watch Chuck Fusina again, just scrambling, and Fusina throws, excuse me, 50 throws up his hand. As he breaks across that man-to-man -man coverage deep in the end zone. He kind of had his choice. I think he had Folsom open going to the corner as well. But he chose uh, Pitsky. Uh, you know, I guess it's when two guys have known each other that long and played as many ball games, you go to, <laughs> you go to the guy you know, huh? You, you understand them. You know some of the little moves he's about to make yep. and you can read them better. All right, Trump will kick it off. Wind whirling, and whirling around and Thomas Watt takes it on the goal line. A yard deep in the end zone. Out he comes. Wedged in front. Hit at the 20. Thomas gets it for the 22 before he is knocked back by Roger Jackson, another Penn Stater. 11.39 to go in the first half, and Philadelphia leads New Jersey by a score of 6 to nothing. The Generals have the ball. New Jersey Generals in the white. The football is theirs at their own 22. They trail by a score of 6 to nothing here in the first half. The quarterback is Bobby Scott, 33 years of age, 11-year veteran out of the NFL in New Orleans. And Tennessee, his alma mater, sets him up out of the eye formation. And he's back to throw. And Walker has a safety valve on the left. Gets good protection, now gets the man downfield, and he misses him. As Larry works himself into the open, but by that time, Bob Scott had run out of time. And here's Tim Brandt with Scott Fitzgerald. They showed you man covers, and it looked like they gave you zone. Did you read that? So I read, uh, I was in the slot, and I read the guy up on me, and I told uh, he was going to hang on me all the way. I put a little move outside and went across the middle, and I just saw an opening in the corner of the end zone, so I just sprinted for it and turned around and Chuck threw it to me. You and Chuck go back a long way. You still look comfortable. Yeah, well, we've been practicing real hard for about four weeks, and, uh, you know, we hope to do the best we can. Okay, Scott. Back up to you, Keith. Second down and ten. Thank you, Timmy. We've got 11 and a half minutes to go in the first half. throw it again. He's got Walker out in the uh, pattern, and Herschel's got the ball. He is hit at the 30, and he is drilled back by Scott Werner. Scott Werner was the safety man and an All-American at Georgia in the year the Bulldogs won the national championship in beating Notre Dame. And here's a look at Scott. Not a fast defensive back, but real smart heads up ball player. Reads, reads the quarterback extremely well as he just sat back, waited for Herschel Walker. Sam Mills now, number 54, that inside linebacker. You see him, Sam, <laughs> again, he's looking for action anywhere he can get it. And it's third down and two. They reverse it, ball goes to Slauson, and Mark Slauson on the reverse has got a first down and then some. The 195-pounder out of the Citadel, finally brought down by Roger Jackson. It's first down for New Jersey. That's a play they ran last week with some success against the Los Angeles Express as well. The ball is moved out to the 42. Keith, I always have to wonder when a team early in the ball game resorts to this kind of offensive game, uh, the, the trick plays, because they can't do anything with the defensive line. They're not loosening them up, running their regular offense, so now they're reaching with a bag of trick plays, hoping that will confuse them, and now we see a, mo a, a formation change here. And they've got Victor Hicks now drifting around, but Victor's not seen the ball today. As Herschel Walker goes to his left, he gets up to about the 45 for three, and a penalty flag is thrown. So we get our second penalty of the ball game. Holding, New Jersey. Well, they've had two turnovers, and now that's a major. Back him up 10. Time remaining first half, 9 minutes and 54 seconds. Bob Scott last week, 63% at 24 completions out of 38 passes. Tom White Holding, memory. 63 on the white, first down. Troy McMillan, rookie out of Illinois. Troy had a year. 
I had a training camp anyway in the NFL and was dropped. So he qualifies as a rookie in the USFL. 6 0 lead, Philadelphia. All back on the 33. First, first down and 20. Up the middle goes Dwight Sullivan. Hard running back. Oh, he's a big, tough kid out of North Carolina State. Up to the 40 yard line. He picked up on that carry about seven yards. I thought that Maurice Carson also looked uh, like a strong runner. What little we saw him last week. I think eventually Maurice Carson could could be moved into that back row as a starter. Uh, the coaches are very high on him. They believe with a little more time and experience, getting a little bit tougher, that he will move into the starting role of fullback. He's just 21, a rookie out of Arkansas State. Right now, you got Herschel Walker lined up as the eye back. Take to him. George Cooper, a linebacker, and here's Philadelphia. Good field position again as Bobby Scott is intercepted now for the fifth time in the season. Second time today in the third New Jersey turnover. On this play, Victor Hicks, number 81, is the intended receiver. He has his back just to the ball. He, boy, he didn't turn around to make a play for the ball. There was the Cooper picking off last week. Cooper has a very, very good football game, always along the action, making a good number of passes. And it's first down Philadelphia at the New Jersey 32. Now let's see if that big Philadelphia offensive front. And blow the New Jersey defense off the ball again. Quick handoff to Booker Russell. And Russell, a quick hitter over the right side, gets good yardage on first down. He moves it down to about the 25, so give him seven. We talk about that offensive line. Earl Peter, number 75, a rookie on this team was a defensive tackle for most of his college career, defensive end, excuse me, for most of his college career, and only switched to the offensive line in his senior year. And he has got lots of power. I think between he and Chuck Tomiski, that is definitely the strongest side of that offensive line. Dana Noel shaken up, comes off the field for the New Jersey Generals. And we get Anthony Allen going in to replace Dana. Allen's a 175 pounder replacing 200 pounds in strong safety. 175 pounder is going to have a little trouble playing that support role from the strong safety position. Philadelphia, double wide bottom of the picture, drops Bryant back into the deep position out of the eye. Bryant got the ball, and again, the Philadelphia offensive line on second down and two. It's a swinging door. <laughs> you should have seen the way they collapsed the right side, the left side of that defensive line. Eaton, Kaminsky, in the center, just really did a job of opening up that hole. Now, Irv Eatman weighs 280. Chuck Gomeski weighs 280. There they are, 69 and 75. <laughs> There's a solid wall of red shirts right there. And it's first down Philadelphia. The ball is inside the 15. Of New Jersey. Brian again, and he is at the 10. Four and a half. We don't count half, so call it four. Bryant now with 43 yards, and the Kelvin's been busy today. He's carried the ball 11 times. He's been very busy. We talked earlier at the beginning of the show about conservative football last week. Certainly, the Philadelphia team is anything but conservative, and I'm surprised that New Jersey still continues to play that very conservative, unaggressive defense. And costing them. Second down, six. From the ten. Fifty. In motion, ball goes to Bryant. Bryant trying to get to the sideline. Legs are locked. All forward to seven. Mike Williams made the play at quarterback for New Jersey. Williams is going to be one sure man if, if, if this Philadelphia team continues to run out there. They're not getting a lot of support from their linebackers. The linebackers aren't getting out there, stopping the uh, line from, the, from blocking and pulling, getting out in front of Kelvin Bryant. Ball is at the seven. Bryant is out. Collier, Fitzke, Donovan are wide people. Lone remaining back is Booker uh, Russell. I 
think he did. He used too much time. He checked off. It was obvious that he had checked off and called another play. And uh, he used up the allotted time. And it cost him five yards. When you came that's up, the kind of a mistake Chuck Fusino and us make. Especially this close to the end zone. When you came up to the line of scrimmage, I'm positive you expected to see some kind of man-to-man -man coverage. And what he got as far as a pre-read was strictly zone. So he wanted to get out of his man play and go to his own play to take advantage of it. But it did cost him too much time. Ball comes back near the 12. Timeout is charged to the Philadelphia Stars as Fusina goes to the sidelines to get confirmation of what the coaching staff wants. It'll be third down. Ball is at the 12. Six minutes and 47 seconds to play in the second quarter. Philadelphia leading New Jersey six to nothing. The Stars were really close to knocking on the door, but they got a little mixed up in their offensive situation. And they used up the 30-second clock. And uh, the stadium clock now is a little bit askew, so they're going to run it down and get it corrected. In the meantime, Keith Moody has come to the sidelines, the defensive captain for New Jersey, to see what it is that uh, they might try to do in order to hold Philadelphia away from the end zone. Third down with the ball sitting just inside uh, the 12-yard line. safety for New Jersey, the head football coach at Brockport State in New York. This play takes a little time to develop, and what Chuck you see in the season is it's just a big hole, and he thinks he can run it in for the score. Back on the other side, they're running a route, a little bit of a pick route, and he just doesn't have time, time to uh, wait for it to develop. They got a first down out of it. That first and goal just outside the two, give it a blind. They're going to go for two. The three wide receivers are in. Donovan, Fitzky, Collier. Going for two. That's one of the rule differences in the USFL versus the NFL. Here's Fusina, roll to the right, goes to the corner, and it's knocked away. Incomplete. And uh, one of the linebackers, Mike Weddington, number 52, it drops off and slaps the ball away from Tom Donovan. I'll tell you, Mike Wellington made a great play here. He just sticks with a man-to-man. -man. He has great position. It's a tough catch when you've got to reach over the defense, over the receiver, to knock it down. But he does a great job there. And with five minutes and 20 seconds to play in the first half, Philadelphia 12, New Jersey nothing. They have pretty much dominated the football game. That was three New Jersey turnovers. And Philadelphia particularly impressive in the trenches. And that's where you build football teams. Now you can have all the hot dog running backs in the world, and in deference to you, Mr. Swan, the great wide receivers too, but if you don't have the big guys up there in the trenches, you, you just can't build a foundation for a football team. I have always been appreciative and thankful for the good offensive line that I had when I was playing professional football, and I'm sure Kelvin Bryant feels the same way. Right now, he has to be saying to himself, well, New Jersey, you might have a Heisman Trophy winner, but Herschel, I have an offensive line. <laughs> minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half. Thomas Watt is the deep man, former running quarterback for Barry Switzer at Oklahoma. Dave Trout hangs it way up there, and uh, the wind shoves that ball deep, four yards deep in the end zone. Watt comes weaving his way out, and Thomas gets it out for the 20. Here's Tim Brent, and he's with Kelvin Bryant. 
Hey, Kelvin, it looked like an isolation play. Tell me about the touchdown. Well, it was just an uh, isolation play straight up the middle. And, you know, we just wanted to get some movement and, you know, maybe I could find a little crack in there. And, you know, it was wide open for me, so I just, it was, it was pretty easy. But, you know, I, I got hit before I got in the end zone. So all going your way right now. Any particular problems? Well, not really. You know, the offensive line, they're doing a great job up front. So I think as long as they do a good job, I, I think I'll get some yards. Thanks, Kelvin. Back up to you, Keith. On first down, Bobby Scott turns and gives the ball to Herschel Walker. And Walker, getting some daylight, comes across the 30 to the 35 at a first down for New Jersey. Chuck Fairbanks, who is the head coach of the New Jersey Generals, is not consented to allow interviews with his playing personnel on the sidelines. And, of course, this is a decision that is wholly and totally up to the coach. And I don't mean that in any way to be critical of his decision. That is his prerogative. He said, no, that's the way it is. Jim Mora, on the other hand, tells he would not be an incumbent. Just over the 35 to the 36. And the pitch to Walker again, trying to run it to his left. Not going to work. I have the feeling, and we're going to document as we go along through the year, but I have the feeling that uh, Herschel Walker is a right-handed runner. Many of his big runs have all have all been to the right, but here we see Dwight Sullivan, number 46, trying to get a block here, but just doesn't quite make it. You can't leave your feet and dive as an active or, or mobile linebacker. He just plays you off with his hand, keeps his balance, and then he's ready to make that tackle. And that's just what happened on that play. Herschel has run to the left uh, twice, gained five and one. He's run to the right three times. He went three, three, and 16. Second down, a little less than 10. Walker with the ball again. Pursuit's pretty good, but he ran right through. Three people reaching for him. And they finally bring him down just short of the first down at the 44-yard line. Well, every indication was that he had a pretty good week of practice. He said he felt uh, well-adjusted going into the second ball game and that he expected to play more than he did last week. And he has. He comes out of the ball game right now to get a breather. And Larry Coffey goes into the ball game for New Jersey at the running back position. Larry Coffey is out of West Virginia, Wesleyan at 198 pounds. Third down and one. Ball goes to Sullivan. And it'll be close. It will be close as Mike Lush, the free safety, number 27, comes up and hits the fullback Sullivan right on the number. Philadelphia had just about everybody up looking for a short run on the inside. Bobby Scott here makes the handoff. Sullivan's a big man. He has to be a pretty tough little safety. He has some good leg power to come in and stop a man that cold. He did, too. He's short of the first down. The ball is just over the 45. Walker is back in. Fourth down, and the generals are going. Walker into the stack. Should have a first down. Penalty flag is down across the way. From one of the, it'll be the line judge, I think, might have thrown that flag. And we've got offside against Philadelphia. So that will definitely make it first down, New Jersey. And we have 2 minutes, 17 seconds to play in the first half. With Philadelphia leading 12 to nothing. Having missed a try for a two-point conversion. And Dave Trout hooking the kick on the first touchdown. Hitting the upright. And the Upside, right tackle on the defense. First down. At the 49 of Philadelphia. Larry Brodsky. Bottom of the picture. Antonio Gibson just over to cover him. Inside it goes to Sullivan. Sullivan, the fullback, spins out of the grasp of one tackler and gets it to the 45. Four yards. Dave Ofer. A big nose tackle of 250 pounds out of Penn State. 94 right there. You were commenting on the way over plays. The way we've got a timeout now as we come to the two minutes. Two minutes remaining to play in the first half. And remember in the USFL, on each first down, the clock stops until the teams are ready to go. So they say it's time that way. Items for you are USFL reports involved by Lynn Swan. Highlights of games played last night. Two very interesting games and some highlights out of this first half. Philadelphia leading by a score of 12 to nothing. Herschel Walker, who has been 
the principal celebrity since he decided to walk away from a year of eligibility and became the first undergraduate to sign with a professional football team to set off a wide storm. But successive beatings have seemingly dampened some of the thunder and lightning in that. Of course, the big worry of the college people was that the people were running around holding checkbooks out and young people would be grabbing them and running for them. Of course, Chuck Fairbank's big worry was trying to keep him out of interviews and on the practice field yeah. so he could learn this system. Right. Second down and six from the 45. Bobby Scott back to throw. Goes to the sidelines and the pass is intercepted by Mike Lush. That is the today and the sixth interception in two games for Bobby Scott and every New Jersey possession so far in this football game has ended in a turnover here we see Tom O'Connor and we felt at the beginning of the show here's a guy you've got to get the ball to but Lush you see he's not looking at McConaughey he's looking at Bobby Scott he read the quarterback all the way and his eyes followed him right to the receiver and we have a minute 54 to play in the first half. Philadelphia football, first down at their own 34, leading 12 to nothing. Four New Jersey turnovers. My goodness. Star is trying to jump quick here, I think. As they go double wide to, to the bottom of the picture, you've seen it gives it to Kelvin Bryant. Oh, they're going to the ground, and he breaks it big for a first down and then some out of bounds, stopping the clock the New Jersey side of the field at the general 47. Rod Schultz finally shoved him out of bounds. Again, he's running behind the right side of the team, as we see here. Kaminsky gets a great block sealing it off there. Walker just, excuse me, Kelvin Bryant just steps to the outside, uses his speed and stops the clock. <laughs> he stretches his back a little bit there. <laughs> Kelvin now 14 carries, 67 yards. Alan Harmon in, right out for a breather after that fine run. You see the back. To the sideline. Pass is complete. And again, out of bounds. And another Philadelphia first down at the New Jersey 31. Tom Donovan made the catch. Tom Donovan makes the catch. And, and the secondary is so far back, I don't understand why they're giving him so much room. As you can see, the, the safety there, Dana Nolan, number 37, is still a good five yards away from him when he made the catch. I don't believe that Rod Schultz, as good a football player as he is, at linebacker, is going to cover Tom Johnson. Can't Not do it. one-on-one. Not one-on-one. Uh -huh. Just inside the 32. First down, Philadelphia. Stars leading 12 nothing, trying to get another one. Loops to the sidelines, it is intercepted, and going to be brought back by Perry Daniels, a rookie out of Tennessee. And so the general defensive secondary, the cornerback, Perry Daniels, picks one off. You see, Perry Daniels is sitting here playing him a man to man, and he's got help. Deep to the deep inside, but there he just gets inside position. The ball is thrown short, and he makes the catch. You see him again looking for that too deep zone, and it's just a combination of zone and man to man. And the safety was coming back, covering the deep zone, and the, and the corner played the man to man cover. All right, now why has uh, he went away from Steve Folsom, the tight end, and made a couple of big catches over the middle? Uh, Victor Hicks was the primary receiver last week for New Jersey. He hasn't seen the ball yet today over the middle and caught by Larry Coffey and Coffey doesn't get a whole lot of it it started at the 30 yard line and Coffey is hit up around the 35 it'll be second down and five of course in a situation like this the second down the linebackers are looking for the pass they're getting a deep drop so it's a smart play to throw it underneath but with time running out you can't keep going in the middle of the field 102 Scott swings it out Turn him back onto the field of play. And that keeps your clock running. Unless they call a timeout. And I guess they have because the clock has stopped. Excellent defense by Philadelphia once again covering all the receivers downfield. 
not giving anyone, not letting anyone open for Bobby Scott to throw to, so he has to throw it off to the sideline. General calling the time, have two remaining. Third down, four. The ball is just over the 35 with only 51 seconds to play. The coach, Chuck Fairbanks, on the right. Quarterback Bobby Scott on the left. New Jersey signed uh, a former quarterback at, uh, at the military academy, Army, Lehman Hall. Big guy, 6'6", six, six, and about 215 or 18 pounds. Well, he was a striking uh, performer while at, uh, at Army, I thought. I saw him, I guess, three times in the Army-Navy game. But he has obviously been away from the game some because of his uh, requisites of uh, service. But he's back now, and uh, conceivably it could become a factor. All right, I, much like, as we discussed, Roger Staubach, who had to go into the Naval Academy, and that's where that tin man development squad of the USFL comes in handy, so a young man like that has the time to grow and develop. Dave Boister of Holy Cross and Gene Bradley right now, the quarterback listed behind Bobby Scott. Third down and four. And Bobby back. Sullivan, the fullback, moves his way. Bruce Strange, a sure muscle, up across the 40, gets the first down. Well, very close to it. Looks to me like he's got it. Cooper, Lush, Mills, a lot of red shirts ganged up on him, but Dwight had enough power to get his first down. There's your time. He had to get the first down, but he also has to keep the clock as a priority. Now, remember, in the last two minutes of each half, and the clock stops until the chains are in place. And once the chains are down, they're moving again. And the clock is running. And back goes Scott. He goes down. Almost. Did he catch that ball? No. Coffee almost pulled it down. It was a great effort. Almost steered it. Mark McCants out of Temple. Defending. It was a great effort by Coffee. As you see, he's lined up there. And he gets out. He's open here for a second. The ball is just too high and a little late. Almost has it, but just can't get a handle on it. And it's stripped from him by number 20, Mark McCann. 12 nothing. Philadelphia leading. First half, 27 seconds to play. Inside the 35, back at the 33, Frank Case, defensive end out of Penn State. Leading the charge at 6'5 and 252. That was just an all-out great individual effort as they've got most of the people back in the secondary. You see him just breaks around the outside, beats his man, and pulls Bobby Scott down. Time called by New Jersey. They have one remaining. And if they do have a gimmick play in the book, now might be a time to try it. Philadelphia having dominated the first half. Now is a time when they certainly need it, but with everybody in that secondary so far, so 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 far back, deep looking for the big pass play, I don't know if it can work now. I think one of the things we want to watch here in this uh, second half too is why Victor Hicks has been so quiet today, and I got a sneak and hunch Scott Warner may be part of part of the reason because Warner being the strong safety would seemingly be the man to cover that tight end when he goes out, and Victor Hicks has not seen the football. And certainly last week he did a very good job against Denver. Now having a little game film, uh, one one game behind the belt, they can understand a bit what they were trying to do, and Bobby Scott, I'm sure right now, is just a little bit frustrated, learning what it's like to have not a great deal of success when you're the starting point of that. From the 34, third down, 16. the catch across midfield. That'll be a first down. Clock will stop at 13 seconds. New Jersey with the one time out remaining, hustling up to the line so that once the chains are put down, they can snap that ball and get the play going. Chain is down. Referee Tom White winds the clock 10 seconds. Scott back, whipped it to the sideline. Sullivan makes the catch, picks up about three yards on the reception, but gets out of bounds with five seconds remaining. Two very well executed zone pass cabins that they run there, trying to take advantage, trying to take advantage of the space that's between the secondary and the and the linebackers there. Rotsky was behind him on that play, putting pressure on the corner, forcing the linebacker to drop back a little bit deeper. So, the man of the is open. 
McConaughey hustles into the ball game, and they go trips to the right side. Three receivers triple to the bottom of the picture, and Scott's going to put it up as far as he can. It is incomplete. And the first half is over. Well, after 30 minutes of football at the Met in Philadelphia, the Stars of Philadelphia lead the New Jersey Generals by a score of 12 to nothing. We'll be back for halftime after this message and the word from our local station. We're at halftime in Philadelphia, Philadelphia over New Jersey, 12 to nothing. We'll be going back for second half action. But there was USFL action last night. A pair of games were played, and let's take a look at some of the highlights. Last night at Tampa Stadium, before a crowd of over 38,000, the Tampa Bay Bandits hosted the Michigan Panthers in a Central Division matchup. After the scoreless first quarter, the Bandits jumped off to a 7 0 lead. Quarterback John Reed, six yard touchdown pass, Eric Civilian. With the second quarter then winding down, Michigan quarterback Bobby Herbert looks for his prize wide receiver Anthony Carter. 22-yard pickup. And three plays later, it's Herbert once again rolling out. Three-yard scoring strike to his tight end, Mike Cobb, tying the score at seven as the half ended. In Tampa Bay leading 10-7 in the third quarter, Greg Boone scores from seven yards out. The extra point failed as Tampa Bay went on to record a 19-7 decision. Meanwhile, last night in Tempe, Arizona, George Allen led the Chicago Blitz to play before more than 28,000 Wrangler fans. First quarter action, the Wranglers on top 3-0. Quarterback Greg Landry finding Lenny Willis, 15-yard touchdown pass. That gave the Blitz a 7-3 lead. The team traded field goals, and in the third quarter, with Chicago on top 10-6, Landry once again. This time finding rookie Paul Richter with a 12-yard touchdown pass. And George Allen's team is on top, 16-6, looking good. In the fourth quarter, the Blitz on top, 23-12. Greg Landy looking once again. His third touchdown pass of the game, the second to Paul Ricker, this from 16 yards, and that made it 29-12. Then with 6.55 to go, Ricky quarterback Allen Richter connects with Jackie Flowers on a 10-yard pass to cut that lead, 29-18. Now watch the two-point conversion coming up. Richter scrambling all over the place. Looking like Fran Carson comes. Finally, finding receiver Mark Steele in the end zone. And a 28-yard completion to make it 29-20 in favor of the Blitz. And it was Richter again, with only 2.48 left in the game. This time, finding wide receiver Neil Ballholm from nine yards out of the Rangers' close to within two at 29-27. Four seconds on the clock. Kicker Jim Hasmus, 33 yards out. Arizona over Chicago in an upset 30-29. What a game. And that will have George Allen talking to himself. That's the kind of score he usually wins by. Well, maybe the USFL has already reached parity. Chicago, a suspected powerhouse, but it was Arizona losing 24 to nothing last week to Oakland. Okay, let's go back now to Philadelphia and Keith Jackson. Frank, Frank, thanks very much. Nothing like an upset to wet the appetite is there. It's Philadelphia leading New Jersey 12 to nothing. Lynn Swan. Let's talk about this first half. Of course, turnovers are very obvious. When you turn it over four times, chances are pretty good you're going to be behind. And especially when they're turning it over and giving Philadelphia a great field position. And that offensive line of Philadelphia, of Philadelphia is doing a great job. Eatman, Kaminsky, the Yost brothers are just dominating that defensive line to no end. The first half numbers reflect in total yards. Decided edge for Philadelphia in passing as well as running. And uh, go back down there to your turnovers, four to one. That's, that's pretty tough. Looking now at some of the highlights out of that first half, the first touchdown where Fusina throws eight yards to Bisky. Well, that's just a guess that old combination from Penn State working out some kinks and having a great deal of success here. Simple little pattern across the field. And as you can tell, Scott Fisky's a little happy about it. <laughs> and Calvin Bryant, the rangy fellow. There's another angle of the... Uh, the You've seen a Fitzky touchdown. Now, Kelvin Bryant, the lanky fellow from North Carolina, slants it in from two yards. It's just a great example of what the offensive line is doing. He gets behind Eatman and Comiskey, and uh, he falls over because there's no one there to stop him. What does New Jersey have to do? For obviously, they've got to quit uh, turning the ball over. And they obviously went to their ground game. They tried to get some movement offensively on the ground. Didn't get much out of it. Uh, Bobby Scott had some time to throw, but I don't think Scott can go deep. 
Scott can't go deep. And that's why they're trying to execute a ball control offense. I believe what they have to do is mix up that offensive attack and open it up a good deal more. They have to get their back down the middle of, that, uh, of the field into the secondary to create some confusion. Uh, and then they've got to run to the outside and get, again, McConaughey involved because he is a very precise receiver when it comes to the pass route. Herschel is not having a great day. And I think Herschel, we all know Herschel can run provided he gets some blocking. Nobody can run without blocking. Right. And we, but we haven't seen him get down into that secondary to affect him on the passing game. And we all feel that we've discussed it, that in this new league, passing is going to dominate. Certainly, it's opening things up for the Philadelphia team. New, New, New Jersey certainly hasn't established very much of a passing game and has not used her to walk her much. Okay. All right, we're at halftime. It's 12 nothing. Philadelphia leading New Jersey, and we'll be ready for the start of the third quarter after this commercial message and the words from our local station. With his Philadelphia Stars leading 12 nothing, let's find out what Jim Morrow thinks about the state of things here. Thank you very much, Keith. Jim, the story of the first half obviously had to be turnovers. What are you doing defensively to confuse uh, Scott? Well, we're not doing much different than we've done last week against uh, Denver. Our defense came up with six turnovers last week, and we've got some today, which uh, they're just playing hard. And they're playing very opportunistic uh, defense, and I hope we can keep it up the second half. It looks like he's having a tough time reading. He's definitely throwing in the coverages. Are you using some combinations out there? No, we're, we're pretty basic with our coverages. We're not doing too much to confuse him. Nothing different than we did last week. And the adjustments at halftime for Herschel Walker, you've contained him pretty well. Well, yeah, Herschel's a guy, you know, you got to stay after the whole game because he's close to breaking about every time he carries the ball. So hopefully we just get people to the ball and tackle well, and uh, we can do a good job again in the second half. What do you think the key is to the second half? Well, Again, we got to contain him, and defensively, we've got to keep coming up with the uh, the big play, and offensively, we've got to move the ball. Uh, we can't let down. We've got we've got to come out of the second half thinking it's a zero-zero ball game and play play real hard. Okay, Jim, thank you very much. You. Keith, that's the story down on the sideline. All right, Tim. Incidentally, Herschel Walker was on the field for New Jersey for 21 of the 30 offensive plays they ran in the first half. continues to whirl around, blowing very the, the flags on top of the vest here in Philadelphia are really whipping, you can see. That wind comes down inside. We saw it uh, grab a hold of Dave Trop's field goal attempt and just, just knocked it down. It's almost as if an invisible hand reached up and slapped it aside. New Jersey yet to get untracked in this ball game. And the difference in the ball game, as Lynn Swan pointed out, Philadelphia is just flat whipping him in the trenches. Offensively and defensively, the big guys along the line of scrimmage. Dave Trout played his college football over at the University of Pittsburgh and also played some professional football at, for the Steelers. Steelers, yeah. 1981. He was fourth in field goal accuracy. As a matter of fact, the American Football Conference hitting throw about a 17 with the Steelers. Dave Trout. Very strong leg, and I asked him earlier in the week uh, about the about the kicking tee, and he feels that it's not going to help his accuracy, but it will help his power. Trout kicked off to Thomas Watt, the high hanger. Thomas watches it go through the end zone and off the field of play, and it'll be first down at the 20 for the New Jersey General. And resuming the lineup. As they shuffle the people on and off the field, you have Scott, Walker, Sullivan, Brodsky, McConaughey, and Hicks. Millard, McMillan, Hall, Harris, and Murtha. And from the 20, we're ready to go. Brodsky will come wide to the bottom of your picture. McConaughey will be at the top. Fullback for four. The defensive unit for Philadelphia. Three down linemen will be Fielder, Ofer, Case. The linebackers are Brooks, Howard, Mills, and Cooper. And the secondary, Gibson, Werner, Lush, and Jackson. the 
pass complete to Victor Hicks. First time Hicks has seen the football all day. And it was a very clever little game of cat and mouse being played. Scott Werner, I suggested to you earlier in the first half that Werner, the strong safety, is playing that tight end. Let's see what the penalty is. I think it's against New Jersey. It is. Werner would uh, had moved up, and then he started to drop off. And it looked like that Bobby Scott might have picked an audible right there and decided to go to Hicks. In the meantime, Werner just came right back up to it. The guys in that defensive coverage, you can play a simple zone as, as, as more indicates his defensive secondary is playing nothing too fancy, but just by making the subtle movement, you can create confusion. Illegal motion on the white. Second down. Break the concentration. Get a little bit of a movement on the offensive front. Results, you got a five yard penalty. Herschel Walker listed at 222 pounds carrying the football. He broke one der today for 16 yards. The ball is now sitting at the 24. And it's going to be third down and six. Starting the third quarter of play, the Stars having pretty well controlled New Jersey. New Jersey helped them with the four turnovers, no question about that. Three interceptions and the fumble. Now they've got Hicks flexed out to the right into a slot, and Victor going downfield, but coming out of the backfield is Wright Sullivan, the fullback, making the catch up across the 30 and the first down for New Jersey. That motion case was designed just to take the corner out of the play if it's a man-to-man -man coverage, and then you put the pull back right in the area with a linebacker covering him. And if you guess right, if you get the man-to-man -man that you're looking for, it's an easy catch and the first down. It's kind of funny to see big old Victor Hicks take off on a fly downfield, though, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Firing his shoes the way he went. Gibson comes over now to cover Brodsky on the bottom of the picture. And Bobby Scott back. He has to swing it out to Walker. Throws it high in the air. The ball pops in the air and it's loose on the ground. And Philadelphia's got the ball, I think. They do. Second fumble for Walker. Scott Werner comes out of it. So two Georgia boys involved there. All knocked loose from Herschel. And uh, it's starting off. It up. They're starting off just where they picked up. First, let's take a look at John Bilger, who comes in and really starts this play going off that as he calls for Bobby Scott to fake that pass to draw the ball back because he's right in his face. You hear Herschel just get popped. Ball is loose. Scott Warner, again, aggressive play on his part, in on the tackle, in on the fumble recovery. And Philadelphia knocking on the door again. Second by Herschel Walker on this fumble. And as Glenn pointed out, defensive pressure there forcing Scott to throw the ball high. And now Walker has to jump up in the air. And then here it comes. It's bang, bang, and the ball is loose. And the Stars have it. And they have it first down at the New Jersey 31. And Chuck Fusina pitches it out to Kelvin Bryant. Bryant behind the right side of the line gets a couple of yards. That time the penetration by the New Jersey linebackers a little bit better. There in the lineup. Same one that uh, started the ball game. First quarter, starting it here in the second quarter. But again, go back to the big people. Kaminsky and he's 280, 280 on the right side. Uh, Oates and Garza, 275, 260 on the left side of Bart Oates, the center, who's in at 267. Steve Folsom's been quiet. He was used a lot early. He hasn't done much lately. Might be saving him. He's going toward the end zone. Curls it back in the middle. Fusina throws it and hits him. That was Donovan. That was Tom Donovan, not Colton. Donovan coming out of that uh, the tight end side. Downfield, 15, and came back to get it. Tom just does, does a good job here. Nothing fancy again. Getting in between the seams of that zone defense, Fusina had more than enough time to throw that pass before Eaton was demoralizing his man on the line. And the ball is at the 19. First down for Philadelphia. High formation, Brian Pete. Kelvin has it, and he is hit 
at the 19. Balls ahead for a yard. James Lockett, a 259-pound defensive end from Missouri, slanting across, got him early. There's your three down people. Lockett, Watson, Murray. Backers, same as started the game. And the secondary is the same as started the game. And uh, the star is now working into the shade out of the sunshine. Not a cloud today, but it was cold and wet for the last three or four days in this part of the country. Chuck Fairbanks watching from the sidelines. His general's down, and they're in trouble again. A very good-looking Philadelphia football team. Eugenia is back. He loops it up. He's got Donovan, and he just missed him. Just missed him. Donovan kind of got tangled up with Mike Williams and really didn't have a chance to turn on the burner. Just a bit, and the ball was thrown deep. Had he seen the ball sooner, he may have been able to adjust his route to make the catch, but Shishina gets a snap, and the ball is snapped a little bit early for him. There you see the contact, and he breaks away from him, but when he sees the ball, it's thrown deep and not across where his angle would have allowed him to make the catch. Once again, the wind might have affected it with a softly thrown ball. Wind could have floated it a little bit. It'll be third down and about eight from the 17. Runs it. Slides for his first down and looks like he might have it. If he had uh, put his head down and gone toward the goal line, it wouldn't be any question about it, but he tried to do the hook slide in front of Anthony Allen and it's close. Ray Anthony Allen hit him. It's a good thing he did do the hook slide. One thing about Chuck Machina, when he decides to run, he doesn't hesitate, doesn't wave the ball around. He just puts his head down and goes. It is fourth down, and Philadelphia's going. Ben Watts comes hustling in. Big guy, 270-pound nose guard to set up a goal line defense for the New Jersey Generals. On fourth and one, the ball up to nine with 9.57 to play in the third quarter in a timeout. During the timeout, Philadelphia coaching staff deciding on fourth and one, they'll give Dave Trout a chance to go for three. And he'll do it out of Jim Cron pole. Jim Cron, of course, quarterback, University of Arizona. Backup man here behind Chuck Fusina. And Dave Trout, they missed from 41, going from 26. Plenty of leg on it. He's through there with it. And with nine minutes and 54 seconds to play in the third quarter, the Philadelphia Stars build the lead to 15 to nothing over the New Jersey General. Boston Denver just getting underway out west. No score in the ball game. The other ball game going on this afternoon uh, is Birmingham at Oakland. And on Monday night, the Washington Federals will be in Los Angeles against the high kickoff. Humble to the end zone by Thomas Lott. And Thomas just drops down on the knee, and that brings the ball out to the 20. First down for the New Jersey Generals, who are trailing the Philadelphia Stars by a score of 15 to nothing. Good scoring drive on the part of Philadelphia. Six plays, only 22 yards, two minutes and 49 seconds to come away with the field goal. But that field goal forces the New Jersey Generals to score two touchdowns and convert for two points to take a lead. So a good strategic choice in going for the field goal. Backfield, it's Larry Coffey and Bryce Sullivan. With Coffey going in motion. On first down and 10 from the 20, and Bobby Scott goes to the sidelines for Coffey. Never got a hold of it. The ball was uh, hot on his fingers, and uh, about that time, Antonio Gibson came across and whacked him. Here's Tim. Down close to the goal line, and I heard in the discussion here on the sidelines, it looked like you were going to go for it. Why did you change your mind? Well, um, with a 12 point you know, 12 point lead we have now, we saw the three points to give us a little more security. And uh, right now, they got to get two touchdowns and a field goal before it was just two touchdowns. Very quickly, you banged up your arm. Is it okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. His right arm, Keith. Keep, keep an eye on it. All right, Tim. Chuck Cusini is talking to. Second down and 10. Got to the sideline. Pass is caught by Mike Friday, and Friday turns it back up field and gets the first down. If he'd gone on out of bounds, he'd have been out short of the first down. But he turns it back, and they'll move the markers down. Okay. 
good movement by Freedy after he makes the catch in giving that first down. Just a simple down and out pattern. He catches it. The secondary is back deep. He makes that first down, but you've got to be a little careful about dancing around too much. 13 yards on the play. Got now 11 out of 18, 92 yards. Going to throw it again. Looks downfield. Let it go. He's got him open. Wind blows it out of bounds. Freedy just ran right on by the defender. Scott Warner, because of the simple reason he can run fast. Well, that plus the fact Scott Warner took a look back into the backfield, and he saw Bobby Scott running around there being chased out of the pocket, and he slowed up a bit. One of the things he can't do, he, because Bobby Scott got enough time and found that man open. Just, uh, he didn't rely on, didn't play the wind correctly. Needed a little Kentucky windage on that one, because the wind swirling around just literally blew it away from the receiver and blew it out of bounds. What second down? Back he goes again. And down he goes. Oh, Dan Fielder gets his name called. 6'3", 240, 23 years of age. Out of Kentucky. And that was Byron Millard, the uh, left tackle that he beat on the play. Don Fielder. He just stepped outside and just slipped right away from him. Football is sitting at the 26-yard line of New Jersey with 8 minutes and 25 seconds to play in the third quarter. And Philadelphia leading 15 to nothing. And it's third down at about 17. about the penalty. I thought the man might have been down before the ball came loose. Back was turned to him and I couldn't tell. All of a sudden the scramble was on and here's Tom White with the call. Okay. Called against New Jersey and Philadelphia will refuse it. Take the football first down at the New Jersey 38 yard line. As you see, what that was was a man-to-man -man defense, and Antonio Gibson was picked. Picked by one of the New Jersey receivers, and wasn't it on the play? Brodsky made the catch, but then popped it up. Six of seven New Jersey possessions have ended in turnovers. Three interceptions and three fumbles, and here's Houston is trying to catch it in. Roswell going out of bounds with it. He takes a lick, and that'll get a penalty flag against New Jersey as Reggie Mathis hit him. frustration, not being able to get in and stop this play, a busted play as Cucina runs and picks up yardage, so he just took a shot. It's very often that kind of hit, as illegal as it is, to fire up the team. Yes, Cucina is now getting ready to just step out of bounds, and right about now, Reggie Mathis just comes in and puts one on him. That's the shot! You put your hand the ball, Yeah, I got 50. Tom White takes the ball down and puts it down on the 15. First down at the 15. Again, on that particular play, Earl Eatman was blocking on number 96, James Blockett. Cut him just as he's seen went to the outside to gave him the room to pick up the other. Kelvin Bryant tries to cut it back and gets nailed down by Mike Weddington, number 52. Kelvin never had a chance to crank it up that time because Weddington just jumped right on him in a hurry. Rich Carson, the left guard, was pulling on the play, and, and Weddington just fouled up all the time, and they were just bumping into each other. Third quarter, 7.30. Philadelphia, 15 to nothing over New Jersey. The Stars have dominated the ball game. Back goes 
Have you seen it? equipment. They were unpacking it and trying it yesterday, and uh, it's pretty elaborate. They finally got it working late in the afternoon. Well, as long as he can get that information clearly and quickly from his coaches who are up in the press box, giving him a scouting report as the game is in progress, in progress uh, he'll be happy with anything. a great one-handed catch and right here there's the clip there's the clip that uh, causes Kelvin Bryant to have a little running room but the official is right on top of it I couldn't tell from there exactly who it was might have been Kent Hull I missed the referee's call I don't know why but you can't hear him for some reason all this stuff. that goes to Cena on second down and 25 get this pass away the pass is caught Willie Collier. First time today that Willie Collier out of pit has seen the football and he pulls it down. Willie Collier earned his starting job beating out another good receiver, Rodney Parker. He just came across the field parallel to the quarterback in the rollout and as soon as he got open in the zone, Cena picked him up. Collier, you can't see him right now, but it's just one parallel and gets into a team, leaves his man behind and makes a very good catch. Dave Borster, Holy Cross, warming up. We may see him. He has not played in the game so far, but Scott just has not been able to move the team. To the corner, it's out of bounds, incomplete. Intended for Fitzky. And Fusina with Irv Eatman having dropped back along with Bart Oates to protect as long as possible, and Chuck just couldn't pull it down into the corner in time for Fitzky. And here comes Dave Trout now to try his third field goal today. He missed from 41. Was good from 26, and remember in the USFL they use the one-inch kicking tee. So they're on the rug here. And earlier he said that he has given him more confidence. He didn't feel much better about his ability to put the ball through the upright. Plenty of legs, but it's wide to the right from 34 yards. So Dave Trout misses from 41. And this is wide right from 34, and the score remains 50, nothing with 6-12 to play third quarter. Well, here is a new name for you, quarterback out of Holy Cross, Dave Boister. David, starting quarterback for most of his three years with the Crusaders. Won. He lettered in basketball, baseball, football in high school. His dad, Tom Borcher, is the player personnel director of the New York Giants. He was in the Jet Mini Camp June of 1982. Tried out with Calgary of the CFL. Now here he is making his first appearance in relief of Bobby Scott giving the ball to Herschel Walker. And Walker from the 20 gets it up to about the 23. Dave Boyster was a long shot to make the team, Keith, but the coaches feel he has very good arm strength. He's a smart, quick quarterback, and in college he was also an option quarterback, so he has a good deal more mobility. Six-footer, 192 pounds, and 24 years of age. The other quarterback is Gene Bradley, a rookie out of Arkansas State. Walker, the deep back out of the eye. back for his first pass. Goes over the middle with it. It's intercepted. Picked off by Sam Mills, the roving inside linebacker. That is the seventh New Jersey turnover. Eleventh in two games, and Chuck Fairbank just can't believe it. Sam Mills, who had 14 tackles last week against Denver, 
picks up this interception. He just plays good defense. The pass is just a bad pass. You can see there it's way too low. Uh, had he got it up higher and to the outside, the receiver might have had a chance to make the catch. But there he just was playing catch with Will Sam Mills. And Philadelphia has the football first down at the New Jersey 34-yard line. Eucena, roll right. And takes it out of bounds. The man pursuing was Ben Watt, the nose guard, number 95. He almost got it. He's pretty quick for a man his size. No score, Boston, Denver. In the second quarter, we have a camera out there. If something happens, we'll try to jump out there and see what's going on. They put nothing on the board as yet. Games last night, Arizona beat Chicago 30-29, to and Tampa Bay beat Michigan 19-7. to Birmingham, is, uh, rather, uh, Washington is at Los Angeles in tomorrow night's game. Second down, Giusina lost it about two yards. Second down and 12. Just getting good protection this time. Goes over the middle with it. And finds his tight end, Steve Holton. The big guy out of Utah. And pulls it down. Holton now with three catches or four catches on the day. Giusina just great drop back on this play. Pull those up on this ball. And Holton uh, uh, just barely hung on to it. Gets it in his hand, stretches out, pulls it in, hits the ground there a little bit. The secondary was completely thought maybe should have been called incomplete. David Riley is now in at fullback for Philadelphia. He's a West Virginian. 215-pounder, blocking now for Kelvin Bryant, who wiggles his way around the corner. And every time he gets out there, takes the hip, a little juke here and a little juke there. With his quickness, you really get the feeling that he's going to blow one open pretty soon. He's, he's about one move away as we go down to the sidelines. Tim Brandt. Funny, I was wondering why Bobby Scott came out of the ball game because he was uh, he had the three interceptions, but that's not the only reason they made a switch. He's got a bad septum or a bad chest muscle, rather. He has strained it. It is not full, but he is in some pain, and they are going to keep him out of the rest of the ball game. All right, Tim, thank you. It is the first down for Philadelphia. The ball is at the 18. And Fusina, whose arm was damaged a little bit a while ago, looks all right, throws it short to Kelvin Bryant. Bryant changing his pace a little bit. And they spring him out and run him out of bounds with Reggie Method. Getting the contact. He's a little bit short of his first down, it appears. Time remaining third quarter, three minutes and 41 seconds. Fusina now, 13 out of 19 for 164 yards. Neither team throwing the ball, and nobody's really let one go of any consequence. Well, so far, Philadelphia hasn't had to. They picked up real good yards, playing smart football, just taking what the defense of New Jersey gives them and moving it down the field. All those turnovers don't hurt either. Second down and about a yard at the 14 at Bryant. Bryant caught over there by three white shirts. And in particular, Anthony Allen, number 26, the rookie out of Texas Christian University. And looking back across the field to see whether or not they've got the first down, and they'll bring the chains on for the measure. Wind continues to be really the only discomforting factor we've had here today because it's a brilliantly clear day with bright sun. And the chain stretches out. It'll be a first down. It'll be first and goal from the seven-yard line. The Philadelphia Stars against the Generals' defense today rumbled for 273 yards already last week in their 13-7 win over Denver. They totaled only 232 yards. Alan Harvin is in at the running back position. Bryant is out of there. From the seven, first down and goal. And David Riley carries the ball fumbles it and New Jersey comes away with it and so Philadelphia turns it over for the second time today 
And both times, the turnover has brought them a scoring opportunity. Here we take a look at Wally. He gets the ball. He's coming through the middle. And there, the arm, it's just, the ball is punched right out of his arm. Not holding it very tightly. And it's picked up by New Jersey. So they get the ball. First down at their own seven. Turnovers were detailed for you a moment ago. Now seven to two as uh, Philadelphia turns it over for the second time. And Boyster comes out now for his second series at quarterback for the General. Two fifty-two play in the third quarter. Walker with the ball, kind of scooting along, goes down on the ground. Let's go to Frank in New York for a moment. Thank you, Keith. A short while ago out in Denver. 30-yard field goal attempt. Scoreless game there in the second quarter. It is Brian Spielman for the Denver goal. Gets it knocked up in the air by Ernie Price of Boston. He goes into the arms of Ben Needham, the rookie from Michigan. And he goes down the sidelines all the way for the touchdown. So now it's 7-0 Boston over Denver as Tim Mazzetti out of the extra point. Back to you, Keith. That's a different way to score. <laughs> you don't see that one very often. Forster under some pressure, again throws it low, and he picks himself up after being checked, as intended for Victor Hicks. The man that came in and put the heat on him was uh, John Brooks, number 53, an outside linebacker, big guy out of Clemson. Dave trying to use some of his mobility, rolling back out to the side where he didn't very good protection. And the pressure caused him to throw one right into the ground. It'll be third down and about five yards to go for New Jersey. Backed up. On their 12. Trailing 15 to nothing. Gives the ball to Walker. And Walker does not get the first down. Herschel trying to find a little running room in the middle. But just isn't it? Sam Mills and Glenn Howard just stayed at home and jumped him. Now they've been doing that to him all day long and... Again, the, the play selection is surprising because they still have not opened up that offense. They are 15 points behind, and they're not playing what, is, what most people would consider the smart, aggressive football, trying to get back into the ballgame. New Jersey, first punt of the day. Now, they're trailing 15 to nothing. The reason they haven't punted all day is they've turned it over seven times. Scott Werner will return it for Philadelphia. He did that when he was at the University of Georgia, and he's going to do it here, and he's going to give him very good field position. Inside the 40, down at the 38. A 30-yard punt. And Scott Werner brings it back from look like about his 46 for about eight yards. Is the World the Welterweight Championship for the WBC. Nope, McCrory and Colin Jones out of Reno, Nevada. Like the Philadelphia covers it all right. Alan Harbin was reaching for it. It was a hot potato. And now both teams are beginning to make some mistakes. That pitch just goes right through his hand and bounces off his chest there. Fortunate for him, as it bounced straight in front of him, he was able to hang on to it. The two Philadelphia turnovers they have made so far in the ball game against the seven for New Jersey, each time Philadelphia was down in position to score some points. It could be a route were it not for those two turnovers, but actually uh, New Jersey is still in the ball game with 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Of course, Philadelphia's also missed two field goals. There, the big guy blows it open. Booker Russell inside the 20, down to the 15. Before Keith Moody brings him down. <laughs> Was that a pretty hole that they opened up for him that time? Excellent blocking for Eatman. If you watch Irv Eatman from UCLA, he fires out, then he runs downfield, gets in front of Russell, swings off, another good block downfield. You don't find a deep, an offensive lineman often getting downfield, making a block on the people in the secondary, but Irv Eatman got down there and helped Russell out. Third quarter is over for this exclusive of ABC Sports. Our score, Philadelphia 15, New Jersey nothing. Back for the final quarter after this message and the word from our local state. Ago, we don't think we'll see Bobby anymore today. Right now, the problem for New Jersey is not with their quarterback, but with their defense. How to stop Philadelphia. 
Philadelphia's been stopping themselves down in scoring position. Otherwise, this game would be long gone. Here's the pitch back. And Black works it up the middle. And on first down, when it looked like he was going to be caught behind the line of scrimmage, just kept sliding away from people and worked it back and got himself a bit of a gain out of it. He is very elusive, and he's been so all day long as he has helped the Philadelphia team pull out to a big lead, also in the statistics. They're 117 yards in total offense out in front of New Jersey. Just playing excellent football, and again, a balanced attack, rushing for 134, passing for 134 yards. They have had field position all day long, and that has been a big key to their success. Down to about nine. The ball just inside the 15. And three, six, seven man front right now. Of course, one of them's going to drop off with the intended receiver. They play the ball inside, however. And Bryant is stopped uh, after another yard pickup. And again, Reggie Mathis making the hit for New Jersey. Well, they just got to lay the defense for New Jersey. They got to lay their ears back and go out there and gamble a little bit and, and knock some folks around. That's right. Uh, Keith Moody was on the sideline trying to get them all fired up, trying to get them to go out there, play aggressively, try and make the big turnover, the big play. And if, you know, if your offense can't get points on the board, your defense is having problems, you need that. Moody, who is also the head coach at New York University up in Brockton. Brockport. Brockport, excuse me. Fusina again. Looks into the end zone. Throws it short of the end zone. The pass is incomplete. Steve Folsom, his tight end. And depending on the play, one of the linebackers looks like Rod Schoke that dropped off on the covering and he had. And so it is fourth down and uh, once again the Philadelphia Stars will go for the field goal. It'll be the fourth try for Dave Trout. He has been good from 26, having missed from 41 and 34, and this one will be from 31, and he'll hit it out of Jim Cron pole. The 13-22 to go in the ball game. Well, New Jersey is offside. The kick is up, and the kick is good. I know for a fact that uh, the general jumped offside, but uh, they'll decline it, and it'll go as three points and make the score 18 to nothing. Philadelphia leading New Jersey. Another look, you see Reggie Mathis jumping right there, making contact. They go ahead with the play, and Trout knocks it through. Remain in the ball game for the New Jersey Generals to do some putting up. Right now, the show belongs to the Philadelphia Stars. Other games being played, you saw that block kick and the long run by the Boston Breakers for a 7-0 lead over Denver. Birmingham is playing at Oakland out on the West Coast this afternoon, just getting started out there now. At 1 o'clock start, the kick by Dave Trout goes out of bounds, so that'll cost him five yards. He'll have to come back and kick it from the 30. And the Monday night game will be the Washington Federals at Los Angeles against the Express with Los Angeles having opened with a narrow but exciting win over the, the New Jersey Generals last week in Los Angeles. So they'll back it up to the 30. And not a whole lot of drama in that one. 31-yard field goal by Trout. 18 to nothing ball game. The way Philadelphia has dominated the game today, I, I have the feeling that it ought to be 35 to nothing. It very well could, could have been, as you said earlier. They did turn the ball over when they had great scoring opportunities. They had a couple of field goals that were missed. Uh, one specifically because of the win. The other maybe just uh, more of an errant kick. And um, the missed PAT. Now Trot still can't do much with it. The ricochet is off of Weddington and it's picked up uh, by Larry Coffey. And Coffey comes back to the 41-yard line. And uh, I think that's... One of the few moments in the, the day when you could say that New Jersey has pretty good field position. What, while we are assembling ourselves here, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WPBI TV, Channel 6, Philadelphia. And Dave Borster comes out at quarterback in relief of uh, Bobby Scott. He hasn't had a whole lot of luck either. 
Hands the ball off to Dwight Sullivan, the fullback, and Sullivan is caught and dropped after a couple of yards, up maybe the maybe three yards to about the 44. Number 96, Don Fielder, made the play. Herschel Walker's numbers on the day, not all that impressive. And again, here in the second half, he has uh, been pretty quiet. Coffee has been in the ball game. He's only carried the ball four times. He was on the field for 21 plays in the first half. Second down and seven. Ah, Borster drills Sullivan on the numbers. He gets it over on the Philadelphia side of the field, and a penalty flag is thrown by the back judge. Glenn Howard brought him down. Look out for this one. I think it's going to go the other way that it is. It's a clip. Boy, when it's going bad, it just wall falls, doesn't it? Oh, uh, that's, that's the kind of play that this New Jersey team needs. Something that's big, something moves them down the field very, very quickly. We have not received a crowd count on today's ball game. I just frankly can't begin to tell you how many people are here. Now, the vet seats about 60,000. I would say it's at least half, maybe a little more than half full. Number 85, second down. Mark Clark, Flipper. And most of those people here, Keith, are on the sunny side of the field. Yeah, they moved around with the sun, didn't they? Yeah. Here, we see, here we see the clip by Mark Clark, the number 85, right there. Really not much of a clip. I don't know if he pushed him. He just looks like he knocked him down. At the 41. Flags down, New Jersey 4 for 45 yards, Philadelphia 5 for 35 yards. Moisture back. Gets it off to the sideline. The pass caught by Clawson. He takes a hard whack and holds on to the ball and gets the penalty flag. They may tack on some more. Personal foul yardage right here. Unintentional five. Well, one thing for sure, Dave Boyce has seems to have found his arm in the range now. John Bunting, number 59, an 11-year veteran with the Philadelphia Eagles involved in the play. He signed with the Philadelphia Stars this past week. Number 23. Here we see Stockton going down to a simple out pattern, secondary sack beat. Right there, you saw it as he was going down the head, just pull straight down. Antonio Gibson. Inadvertent draft, five-yard penalty, first down for New Jersey on the Philadelphia 35. Dave Borscher back to throw it. Goes short with it again to his fullback, Dwight Sullivan, and he is hit just as he crosses the 30. And the man who made the hit, Sam Mills, in there again. Well, Sam Sullivan is having a good day so far. He's been carrying the ball quite a bit. He's done very well in his pass patterns, and now they're starting to take advantage of what that defense is giving them. He gets underneath the linebackers, makes the catch, then the backers come up quickly, reacting, making the tackle. Sullivan has caught five for 23 yards. It is second down and uh, about four and a half, just inside the 30. They send the coffee in motion, and Borscher looks to the left side, goes to the sidelines, and the pass is incomplete intended for McConaughey. Okay, let's check in with Frank in New York. Thank you, Keith. Still stuck in quarter action. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Boston on top, 7-0. This is Boston in possession. Quarterback John Walton dropping back, looking for his rookie receiver, Nolan Franz. He gets single coverage into the end zone, and Boston now leads Denver 14-0. Back to you, Keith. Well, I would think that might be considered a bit of an upset, too. Boston goes on to beat Denver out in Denver. At least they're not up to their elbows in snow like they were last week. Here's Borchia back to throw the ball again. Being formed by the Philadelphia defense. Sam Mills, 54. Glenn Howard, 51. And John Bunning, 59. Keith, the play before this, they, they pretended like they were going to blitz and didn't do it. This time they lined up and everybody came. You can see here, number 51, put some good pressure on them. Glenn Howard and then Sam Mills, who was also in there, Finishes, finishes the tackle off. And the loss is back outside the 37, where it'll be third down and about 13. 
Gets it off. He's got McConaughey and he can't hit it. Tom couldn't come back to it in time. Here's Tim. Okay, but you're gonna play? Yeah. Okay, he's gonna play. Back up to you, Keith. Kelvin Bryant, what do you have? Store back? Back spasm. Back spasm. Okay. The same thing that was bothering Antonio Gibson at the start of this ball game and bothered him last week. The New Jersey General trailing the hook up on fourth down. Go back to the defense with 10.45 to play. Time now becomes an ally of the Philadelphia Stars. 10 minutes and 45 seconds to play in the ball game. And Bardo up and over the ball. They got a couple of good centers here. Joe Happy who played football down at Georgia. He was on the team with Herschel Walker himself. Philadelphia center. And Kelvin Bryant shaking off a back spasm to get back in a ball game. That's 15. In motion. And give the ball to the fullback, Booker Russell. And Booker gets involved in a big collision with the line of scrimmage. Ben Watts, the big nose guard, was right there and he laid it on him. Watts, 6'2, 270 out of Stephen F. Austin. The ball game just starting out on the West Coast. Total offense today, Philadelphia over 300 now, 318 yards to 196 for New Jersey. And on second down and nine, Fusina's pass is incomplete, intended for his tight end, Steve Folsom. Steve Folsom running a crossing route against man-to-man -man coverage. Got an inside release off the line of scrimmage and wasn't too difficult. He was open to pass, just thrown beyond his hands. And the Carino comes out of the linebacking position now. Weddington goes back in. Reggie Mathis is out. And on third and long, third and nine, they put in what has come to be called the nickel defense. is on it at the Philadelphia 35. So New Jersey makes the break. And that's just what they're looking for. Lockett's going to come in now and jump on Fusina, knock the ball loose, and Mike Weddington, number 52, is going to pounce on it. Here comes Lockett, big 96. Er, he just beat Irv Eatman on that play. He beat him on an outside rush, took him upfield, and crashed in. Fusina had dropped back and didn't step up into the pocket, so Lockett was able to come in and make the big play. It's been, it, it's news today when somebody beats Eatman, so he hasn't done it much. And here is Forster giving the ball to Herschel Walker on a sweep right. Munning is after him, and Gibson comes up to shove him out of bounds. Attendance today, 38,205. And that's about 13,205 more than they expect. <laughs> of course, the weather turned good. One of the things the Phillies, of course, play here, and Philadelphia has a history of, of, of being what is called a good uh, walk-up town. In other words, they get up, sample the weather, see how much they want to go to the ball game, the weather and the desires there, they go. Because they have a lot of parking around the vet. It's easy, very easy to get in and out. Walker is out now, and Larry Coffey is back in. For New Jersey, and Boyster on a short drop goes quickly over the middle, and Victor Hicks sees the ball for the first time today. Makes the catch, and John Bunning jumps on him and knocks him down. Time remaining, 9.40. He gets the ball here, puts his head down after he makes the catch, and Victor is greeted by about three helmets here. Doesn't pick up much, but it's a good game. Creates a nice third, third down and short situation for the New Jersey General. Boyster, three out of seven for 30 yards, had one picked off. David back. Again, goes to the short man, bounces it in front of the intended receiver, Larry Coffey, coming out of the backfield. He had a better chance, I think, that time if he had seen McConaughey going deep. I'm sure when he dropped back that time, Keith, he was thinking, well, I've got to throw the safe pass here. Don't want to take too much 
all of a sudden, and he probably didn't even look at McConaughey, which is a mistake. Right. Fourth down now, and two. This is the second time they've tried to go for it on fourth down. McConaughey and Brodsky. All the white people, and they move uh, Victor Hicks now over to Brodsky's side of the field. Fielder came in and really messed it up first, didn't he? Scott Warner came up. Uh, saw the play action, and he just came charging up, trying to support the run, found himself in the backfield when there was a pass. You see Scott Warner, number 25, coming up right there as he takes on the back, and right there forces the, forces him to step up, and that's the fourth sack of the game. Time remaining, 9.08. I think this is a very revealing statistic. I'm always impressed. Uh, anytime you can get six yards on first down, you're, you're on your way to winning a football game. And that means you can do anything you want on second and third down. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia now taking over the football first down at the 33. You see this stays in there, gives the ball off to Kelvin Bryant. Outside he goes and up the field he wanders all the way to the 50. Keith Moody and Reggie Mathis finally bring him down. Right side of the offensive line, open the door. Once again, Irv Eatman there closing it down. And you see Kaminsky pulling around. When Kelvin breaks this downfield, number 81, Scott Fitzky, blocking on the cornerback. Now, a block like that is the difference between the play going six yards and the play going 10 or 11 yards and downfield. And he has just gone over 100 yards. 102 yards on the day. He may be the first running back. In fact, I think he is in the USFL to go over 100 yards, and he's got it again and blows it up the middle. Oh, boy, he was a half a step from see you later right there. James Lockett brought him down. Oh, he is an elusive man. Real nice play here. It's great blocking. You can see the center just screams off his man. He reads that line and then cuts back. Irv Eatman again blocking a cutoff block on the backside, allowing allowing Kelvin Bryant to get a few more yards downfield. He picks up nine. He's got 111 on the day. It's second down and one. Got it for the first down. Now the surge behind the center and the Bart Oates and Comiskey and Garza is good for the first down at the 30. Eight, where they're going to mark it. Nope, 39. It's been a long day for that man, Chuck Fairbanks, and his football team. Keith, those last two plays are perfect examples of what happens when you get the big yardage on first down. That created second and short, and a team that has the lead can now rely on a ground game, eat up the clock, make the first down, and maintain possession and control of this game. Kelvin Bryan out now, getting a pad strapped onto his left arm. The middle goes the fullback, Booker Russell. 35, 34, 33. And time remaining, six minutes and 50 seconds in the ball game. Russell now with five carries and 44 yards in the ball game. Looking ahead to some of the matchups in the schedule for next week as we move on to week number three in the USFL. limping off the field now getting help seems to have a, uh, have a big problem with his leg we'll try and find out just what it is second down four and it's david riley carrying the ball the west virginian brought down by tom woodland he's short of the first down i'm told that one of the tampa bay running backs i didn't get his name greg boone had uh, at 157 yards in their win last night against Michigan. And that's surprising, too, because uh, I watched Michigan play Birmingham, and that, that bunch of Michigan linebackers are something. They seem to play pretty well in that game, but maybe it was something that they saw in the game film last week that allowed them to uh, ex exploit that defense. Or maybe they just felt a little more confident in themselves than they, than they should have been. Philadelphia leading in this ball game 18 to nothing. It is third down and four, and the ball is given to Harvin. And Harvin finds some daylight, and 
but he's running with some power inside the 15 and out of bounds at the 13. Finally, Keith Moody brought him down. And Keith Moody's presence in the defensive secondary for New Jersey has been a very special thing. It's kept them from getting embarrassed. <laughs> Quite so, and this time, Harvin gets the ball, puts a good move here, showing his strength and balance, breaks that tackle, but Moody right there to pull him down. Talking about Tampa Bay, uh, Lynn, Tampa Bay will be at New Jersey next Sunday afternoon at 1.30 at the Meadowlands. This Philadelphia ball club will go down to Birmingham, Alabama, uh, a week from tomorrow night, Monday night. It's first down for Philadelphia at the 13. They give it off inside to David O'Reilly. And Riley gets down to about the 11th. Of Philadelphia's 210 yards on the crown, Kelvin Bryant has 114 of them. I don't know that we'll see Kelvin anymore today because it's a chance to get a little work in for Riley and Harvin. It's going to be a long season, and certainly when your offensive line is doing a good job, you can afford to put some other people in there, give them some game experience when you have an 18-point lead. Second down, eight from the 11th. Yusina gives it to Harvin, and Harvin is knocked down behind the line of scrimmage by Ray Kostick, number 55, an inside linebacker for New Jersey. Well, Chuck Fairbanks and his troops are going to have to... They sort of played like generals today. They didn't, they didn't play like real troopers. <laughs> You've got to have foot soldiers in there to win the war. There you go. And certainly their foot soldiers, their, their men in the trenches have been handled consistently throughout the day. The ball is put down at the 14 after Kostick had penetrated. There's the man, Kelvin Bryant. 14 yards. Fusina on a roll. He really doesn't have anybody, but drills it and nails Willie Collier. He didn't really have anybody to throw that ball to, and he just zipped the bullet to Collier. It was the same play we saw earlier in the ball game where he was rolling out, and Willie Collier running parallel again to Fusina's rollout, coming across the field. It's just outrunning number 24, Terry Daniels here. The man to man coverage. As we see him going across, he gets open, waits for Fusina to see him, and there he drills it. Daniels making a good dive on it, but just came up short. As again, Fusina's leading his team in the position now for what may be a field goal. It's, it's still fourth, fourth down. down. Yeah, fourth down. Fourth down and about a yard. They've got to go just inside the three to get the first down. And there's Willie who made the catch. And they're going to go. Now they call time. They call timeout with three minutes and 13 seconds to play in the football game, leading by a score of 18 to nothing. And I think they're going to try to stick in the end zone. yard on the four yard line and they're going to go with Jeff Rodenberger having come into the ball game number 34 to running back replacing Booker Russell who has a bruised knee and Chuck Cena comes back so instead of loading up Dave Trout for the three they're going to go for the seven or more or six at least this is how you played a few Keith <laughs> well, maybe just his uh, goal line offense hadn't impressed him much I guess maybe he wants to work on it Is it there? He's got a first down, though. He's got a first down for sure. I thought for a minute he had uh, crossed the point of the goal line, but no. And Keith Moody down on the play. Keith, who weighs 185 pounds, got caught under that huge mound of humanity, and he is hurt. Boy, you lose him out of that secondary, and that is a heavy, heavy loss. You lose, a, you, you lose a leader, a good team player, an inspirational player, and someone you can depend on. Uh, we certainly hope it's not too serious an injury. It was like an ankle, huh? Let's, let's take a look at the offensive line on the right side. As again, they get a great surge here. 
Harvin just slipped right through there. Now watch Moody as he comes in here. There's a ball going to Harvin. And right there, there he is. His leg gets rolled on right there. Yep. When Harvin went down uh, with Mathis on top of him, they rolled over on it. Moody had eight tackles in the ball game today, so that ankle is damaged. And Keith will have to leave the ball game. Big loss for the general. But hope it's nothing more than a slight sprain. We'll be able to play again next week. Three minutes, a little less than three minutes. 2.57 to play. In the football game, 18 to nothing. First down and goal to go. Philadelphia, the ball is about a foot away from the goal line. Harvin and Riley. And the quarterback sneaks it in. Well, Keith, if Jim Moore wanted an extra touchdown, he got it. I certainly don't understand why it was necessary to go for a touchdown. Apparently he has some reason for it. That's Fusina's second of the year. Has a little problem grabbing the uh, snap from center, but he gets it. Bombs is over. Good block by the center. Ron holds, crowd kick, and it's good. Two minutes and 41 seconds to play in the football game, and the score grows now to Philadelphia 24. And New Jersey, nothing. But well, we had one shutout, or 25 to nothing. We had uh, one shutout last week. Uh, Oakland shutting out Arizona, 24 to nothing. Now this one is 25 to nothing. So this could be the second uh, decisive shutout of the year. At halftime, Boston Breakers are leading the Denver Gold by a score of 14 to nothing. One of those having been a, a block. Field goal, was it? Field goal. And uh, return for a touchdown, virtually the length of the field. And Birmingham, Oakland playing out in Oakland this afternoon. How about Reggie Collier had a reasonably good ball game uh, last Monday night against uh, the Michigan Panthers, but his uh, passing came up a little short in a ball game. It was a relatively lackluster offensive ball game, and apparently the, the Michigan offense wasn't much uh, against uh, Tampa Bay last night. Reggie Collier has a great deal of talent, but when you've got so much talent and you're young, that talent has, that talent has to be bridled to a degree. Yep. I'm trying to figure out what they were doing. It looked like they were wrapping the lower part of Keith Moody's foot. The kickoff bounces along the ground. It is picked up by Dwight Sullivan, the fullback, and Sullivan goes to the sidelines and gets tumbled out of bounds. Uh, just Dwight over Sullivan. the 30. Just short of the 30. They mark him at the 29. Put some ice on the foot. It is not the ankle, and that can be a, a good sign. Unless it's a dislocation, and those sometimes are a little more difficult to come back from. David Boister, who's playing in relief of Bobby Scott, who has a bruised chest muscle, in at quarterback, trailing 25 to nothing, trying to find himself in this pro game and trying to find some points for the New Jersey Generals, and he finds Larry Brodsky for a pickup. From the 29, out beyond the 45, Michael Lux making the tackle on a first down for New Jersey. And remember, in the last two minutes of the ball game, as the chains are moved, the clock will be stopped. So they're going to get, as a result of this college rule, a portion of the collegiate rule adopted by the USFL, they'll get a few more plays. That's a little short stop and go job to uh, Sullivan. It doesn't work for a whole lot. Gets about uh, three yards. Sam Mills, one more time. Sam Mills did a great job there because there was a lead blocker out in front there, and had not Sam Mills made that tackle, he would have had a lot of running room. And he nailed him down for a yard loss. Back to Belay with two minutes to play in the game. The Oakland Invaders jumping out to a 7-0 lead over the Birmingham Stallions, and you see uh, Ted Terosian, the fullback for the Oakland Invaders, scoring from a yard out. Oakland 
needs this win at all because their next four ball games are going to be on the road. I don't care what league you play in, it's hard to play four in a row on the road. Uh, that is true. They got a mark off about a two yard loss on that last carry. Or Sullivan, a little pass that he caught and then dropped behind the line of scrimmage. He's caught six today for 20 yards. Larry Coffey now lines up in the backfield with Sullivan. And Boyster goes back to throw it to the sideline. Off the hands of Coffey. That pass should have been caught. Pretty well thrown ball. Very well thrown pass. Coffey just couldn't hang on to it. Coffey normally a much more consistent pass receiver. That's about the second one. He's got the second or third one he's had problems with today. Forster back to throw it. Wicks it. It's flapped around. He hit his man right on the numbers. Can't throw it to better than that. Might have been a little bit behind it, but certainly it should have been caught by Mark Slauson. And then later it was almost picked off and uh, intercepted by Philadelphia. That ball Here's Tim Brent. Keith, the injury to Keith Moody, they do not believe it is a broken bone. You were right, it is the top of the foot, down by the toes. He received a helmet blow there. It was like a spear at the bottom of the pileup. He is in great deal of pain, he says, but uh, they don't think it's broken. He won't be back today. Thank you, Tim. to play in a ball game. It is fourth down, and Burling 25 up him on fourth and 12. Moisture looks, trying to find somebody to throw it to. Cannot. Flip loses his footing, and down he goes. Dave Ofer, the nose tackle, was pursuing him, and that is the fifth sack today of a New Jersey quarterback. Again, I'll go back, and it's an old theme. We've been harping on it right along throughout the ball game from really the about the third offensive series uh, possession. You could tell what was coming, and it's just been the day has belonged to the Philadelphia linemen on both sides, offense and defense, and on defense even more so to the linebackers who have done an excellent job in stopping the run on the outside, getting back seven people in the secondary, and putting the pressure on this running game and the passing attack of New Jersey. Kwan is in at quarterback for the first time today for Philadelphia. Gives the ball off on the handoff to Alan Harvin, the 200-pounder from Cincinnati. And Harvin going from the 34, takes it inside the 30 to the 29 for five yards. Jim Kwan played his college football out at Arizona. He went to Canada played some football. Had three years in the pros before he checked in with the Philadelphia Stars here in the USFL. Down and five from the 29. Clock now showing a minute to play in the ball game. Dave Riley carries the ball inside. And Steve Hammond, the rookie out of Wake Forest, tumbles him back after he picked up a couple of yards. And the clock continues to run. And that's pretty much going to do it. We'll have one more play by Philadelphia, and that will do it. And you can be sure there'll just be a little short run. May not go anywhere, but it won't have to as the clock is running down. There are about 25 seconds left on that clock now. The turnovers today, Philadelphia three and uh, New Jersey seven. Philadelphia two today, the season three. The New Jersey seven, which is as much as anything a big difference in the ball game. That and the uh, line play. The run around the left side by Allen Harvin is going to be good for a first down, and that ought to do it, and it does. The ball game is over as Philadelphia manhandles the New Jersey Generals by a score of 25 to nothing. Long day for Chuck Fairbank walking across the field. His team thoroughly thrashed. The Philadelphia Ball Club now suddenly jumps up with two wins. 
And suddenly, uh, after what happened last night with Chicago getting trips in Arizona, Michigan losing uh, to Tampa Bay, the two teams that suddenly jump up are Tampa Bay and uh, Philadelphia. And depending on what happens out on the West Coast for Oakland, is trying for its second win today as well. Right now, let's join Tim Brandt. Coach, congratulations on the second win of the year. It was a good one. Thank you. It was. We'll take it. Take a lot more like that. Let me ask you about the fourth and one situation down here close to the goal line. You went for the touchdown rather than the field goal. Well, yeah, we just felt like at that time of the game that that was the thing to do, that they were going to have to score, uh, you know, too many times, the amount of time left that for us, to, you know, for them to get back in the ball game. So we felt like we had to do that at the time. Okay, Jim, thank you very much. Okay. Back up to you, Keith, 20. All right, Tim. Final score again, Philadelphia 25 and New Jersey nothing. <laughs> 